Welcome to part one of my three-part series called I Left the Cult, But Is the Cult Still in Me? Today, we're going to talk about fear. Fear is one of the three areas that we are affected most when we leave a cult. Fear is a major motivator. And when you're in the cult, whichever cult it was, in my case, it was the International Church of Christ or the ICOC. And we were taught using fear as a way to manipulate us and to control us. And let's just look at how fear impacts our lives. Now people will say there is a healthy fear and an unhealthy fear. An unhealth a healthy fear would be uh, something that makes sense that is a rational fear such as uh, there's there's the old example of you walking down the street and you see a lion you going to run or if someone pulls a gun out on you you're going to have fear and run and try to either fight or flight so that is what they would call a a healthy rational fear but then you have an unhealthy irrational fear which is what cults do and religion in general that they they instill a fear of what fear of hell um, for one Let, let's talk about fear of hell fear of eternal damnation this hell piece is huge because uh, I for example as a personal um, as a personal uh, illustration of this I was fed hell my entire life even before I was in the cult I had a lot of priming um, for the cult beliefs of hell by my Catholic upbringing. Um, Catholicism believes heavily in, in fear and damnation and the idea of a fiery pit of hell where you will burn for eternity. And by the time I got to the cult, I had plenty of, of programming already in place to accept um, the cult's beliefs that you, uh, if you do not accept the message that they uh, feel is the correct message of salvation, then you are de predestined for hell. Um, Catholicism also uh, primed me for the concept of original sin. And most cults uh, operate on their own version of an original sin doctrine that you were born in sin or in the ICOC they called it you are separated from God and Jesus had to die on the cross and raise again so that God would not uh, smite you and send you to hell because in your natural state the bottom line is you are not um, connected with God you are an evil sinner by nature and you will go to hell if you do not get baptized and, and, and baptized in the method that the ICUC felt is the only way to get baptized. Uh, religious intellectuals refer to it as baptismal uh, regeneration. In other words, that the act of water immersion baptism is what saves you. It's not grace. So here we have this fear piece, this fear monkey on our back when we leave our cult. And it's something that's very underplayed because it's minimized a lot. 
um, many of us, and I, I included, I'm included in this. I spent so much time definitely afraid that I was going to hell. And even when I rejected that doctrine in my mind, there's still that part of you that is afraid in the wee hours of the night. It still has that fear that's lingering in the shadows of your mind and in your soul. And it's a it's a chain that it's very hard to break and, and, and I would say many of us never break it. And it's this fear that ultimately we're not going to make the cut. I used to be definitely afraid that even though I was doing all the so-called right things that, that my cult had said I needed to do to be saved, there's so many um, hoops you have to jump through that, that they impose on you that you realize the second fear. Not only are you afraid that you're going to go to hell is the ultimate consequence, but then there is the underlying fear that you're never enough. This fear that I'm not enough, nothing I do is enough. And this fear is inevitable when you live under a doctrine and a belief system that says that you, your sin separates you from God and that nothing you do will ever be good enough, that even your righteous acts are like filthy rags before God. So many people on the earth today live under this this doctrine whether they're in a cult or not um, many many are in churches that may not be considered cults but it is a religious belief of christianity that you are a wretched sinner and you need christ to save you because without christ god will not have mercy on you and so this has this has unspeakable uh, impact on on every area of our, our psyche and, and, and how we how we view the world and interact with the world and interact with ourselves and um, just believing there is a hell that's waiting for you uh, will put you in a state of fear um, that will paralyze you and believing that you fear that you you know if you have hell and then you have all these 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 rules that you can't live up to because in the, in in your mind you think how do i know how do i know that i've done everything right how do i know god is uh 100% pleased with me if i'm starting off from this deficit that i'm a sinner and god pretty much is detested by me um, well, he detests me rather. How is, you know, it, and they, they love to quote the scripture, we were once enemies of God. So this, this feeds into this fear paradigm. And once we leave, we have to ask ourselves, I've left the cult, but is fear still in me? Is fear of hell, is fear of not being good enough? And here's a third part of fear, is fear that we, fear that we can't know what to do. Fear of our own competency, fear of our own um, adequateness, which ties into fear of not being good enough. That if you didn't feel good enough, if you had this, this deep seated fear that you were never good enough with God in the church, in your cult, then once you leave and you're out in the world, how, how much more are you going to feel without God that you don't have, um, that you can't make it out there, that you can't cut it, that you can't support yourself or survive financially or survive emotionally or 
have a, a, a good life and take care of yourself because we're taught so much that everything we have comes from God and everything good in our lives is accredited to God and and essentially that God is like the Godfather who has pardoned us from hell and so everything he gives us is a crumb you know there's that I think it's a really a messed up thing that Jesus says to the, the woman who comes to him in, in one of the um, New Testament stories and she asks for his blessing and he tells her I have to bless the children of Israel first and she says well even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the children's table and Christians preach this as from the angle that she had so much faith because that's what Jesus said to her that go and be healed because you know or his her daughter be healed I forget what she was coming to him for but he said go and receive that blessing because you um your faith has has done it because you had such great faith even more than the people in Israel and so we approach our beliefs with God and Jesus like we're dogs eating crumbs off the table and every little thing that we get we just feel lucky that we're gonna get it because we really don't deserve it anyway you know there's this underlying self-esteem issue that is pervasive through everything and when we go out into the world when we walk away from these these abusive spiritual systems we take that with us because God has, has taken his protection off of us which goes back to what I mentioned about God being the Godfather that we are ingrained with the belief that God is his protection is over us we have this this favor from God because we are the saved ones even though when we get out in the world we realize no we actually if anything, we had the same amount of fa fa favor as anyone else walking around out here. And and even worse, in some cases, some people that I looked at in my own life, they had more favor than me, quote unquote. Um, so how do you explain this? And you can't, not with their reasoning and, and their their use of the Bible and, and, and all, all of, you know, all that comes with that. So you have these areas of fear that, that you carry with you, that you're going to go to hell because you're no longer in this cult. You no longer believe in Christianity. You no longer believe in this and that. And you're outside of the cult, which cults tell you, if you are no longer in our group, you are going to hell. It is, it is uh, with 100% fact. And even if you reject it, it takes you years to uh, undo that. So let me close out this, this first video talking about fear with um, a, little, a little concept of how, to, how do you go about uh, walking away from fear? Like how do you get that monkey off your back, right? Now, a personal testimony of mine, if you will, is there's a lot of things that I'm still wrestling with, but I can say with complete uh, confidence, I can assure you, I no longer, I'm afraid of going to hell. And, and I was thinking about it as I was preparing for this video and to talk about this topic of fear. Uh, how I did that um, I was thinking well is there a formula like what did I do to um, to free myself from fear because fear is a captor fear is a prisoner it's a prison that we're in um, and the first thing I couldn't really, I have to say this honestly, I really can't give you a formula on how I freed myself from the fear of hell. I no longer subscribe to it. It's actually kind of comical to me now. Um, but what I will say is this. 
when you leave a cult or your religion, you're going to have to fill that void with something. Um, you have to figure out, and this is my take on the whole subject, uh, you have to figure out uh, what your personal conclusions are about um, those topics. Now, for me, I was able to um, disavow myself from the hell paradigm because I thought once I, you know, I, I, once I came to a few other basic conclusions, the first conclusion I came to, and, and I will expound upon this in depth in the future, is that um, my first conclusion was and is that the Bible is not the inerrant word of God. It is not God's word breathed out of his mouth. And I came to that conclusion. Again, I will get into depth on that in another time. But that's the first conclusion I came to that broke me out of the hell paradigm. Because the entire concept of hell is based on the Bible. The weeping and gnashing of teeth. The sin separating you from God. The cross. All of those things. So, um, that is the first thing. And that is the core foundation for me also breaking out of um, the fear that, you know, that God is angry, you know, because it's really the Bible talks about God's wrath. Let me leave it at that, is that if you, you need to come to your conclusions about the Bible and what it says about hell, because where did you get those ideas about hell? Um, it wasn't secular. Where did you get those ideas? And are those ideas from a valid source? Um, does it make sense? Does it make spiritual sense? Does it make lo logical sense? And I'm going to talk about the, about the difference between spiritual logic and um, regular logic. Because I, I have a category for both of those in my mind and how I process things. But to me, hell does not make spiritual sense because if God is the God of love and, and, and he's in the God that created us, it doesn't make sense in the Christian paradigm. It's a contradiction. So either God loves us or, you know, or he or he's sending us to hell. Um, this concept that somewhat something had to come, a mediator had to come and be slaughtered in order for him not to impose wrath on us. There's just so many pieces of it that do not make spiritual sense in the terms of the belief system itself. And then on top of that, you know, when I look at, well, what my connection with God and my con my God concept is, my God concept it doesn't match with the hell. It doesn't make any sense. And then when I look at cults and religion and I see how fear is used, and then it makes sense from an institutional standpoint why hell is so heavily preached and, and that paradigm is held. So all those conclusions together um, assisted me in letting go of the hell paradigm. It just... It was, it was like heavy rocks I was carrying around. I had to just put it down because it just didn't make any sense. So that's, that's it for today. Um, stay tuned for part two of the series. And I hope that you found this beneficial. Um, comment, um, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you later.